Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, first and foremost, before I get started and go on my whole spiel for this workshop, I'd like to introduce Sam Hill. Hello, so um, while we meet today on this virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands in which we call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improve our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and their cultures. We would like to begin by acknowledging the land on which we gather and which the region of Peel operates is part of the treaty of treaty lands and territories of the Mississauga of the Credits. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples inhabited and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron Wendat, Hadanishine, and Ojibwe Chippewa peoples, the land that, that is home to the Metis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississauga of the Credits First Nations, who are direct descendants of the Mississauga of the Credit. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land and by doing so give our respects to its first inhabitants. And we also want to take a moment to acknowledge the recent Atlanta shootings on March 16th in which a white man shot and killed eight people in Atlanta, Georgia, including six women of Asian descent. The act represents only represents only the most recent example of violence against people of Asian ethnicity across North America and around the world. And, um, the Take Action Gallery and Words of the Wind um, stand in solidarity with the AAPI community, contemn the past and present history of violence against the Asian community, and offer our condolences to the friends and families of the victims by recognizing the victims' names, um, which includes Xiaojing Tang, Daoyang Feng, Su Chat Kim, Soon Chung Park, Hyung Zhang Grant, Yang A Yu, Dylana Ashley Young, and Paul Andre Michaels. Thank you, Sam, for that. And welcome everybody to our first workshop. Uh, if you didn't know already, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this today's workshop is in partnership with Up Your Art Nerd History student uh, Francine Frey Quintia and with the Take Action Gallery. Uh, my name is Emma Juliet and I'm the curatorial organizer for the Take Action Gallery and I will be emceeing today's workshop. Uh, today's workshop will be led by Frey uh, and myself on the sidelines uh, during a demo and alongside a uh, an art history lesson uh, all about screen printing. Uh, in the coming weeks, we'll also be having another workshop of how to uh, bookbind these new prints. So please keep these prints, keep making more prints, and uh, be sure to follow us on our Instagrams, our Instagram profiles and such uh, to receive more information about our future live streams and notifications nonetheless. Uh, with that being said, I'd also like to mention our house rules for this live stream. Uh, we'll do our best to answer everyone's questions uh, in a timely manner. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we do not appreciate any foul language uh, presented in the chat. We'll just skip right over you uh, for that sake. Uh, the goal for this workshop is for everyone to gain some knowledge about screen printing, make some screen prints in your own home, and have a little bit of fun, you know? Uh, without further ado, uh, I'll hand it over to Frey and I'll just be in the background speaking with her. Hi, Emma, thanks for that. Um, hi, I'm Frey, and I'm going to be teaching all screen from the comfort of your own home. So first, let's go over our materials. So first off, you will need an embroidery hoop and some sheer fabric. I cut this from a stocking. So I cut it all the way down the leg and that's how I have this now. And you will also need fabric scissors to cut your stocking. And all of this is for the 
silk screen. Uh, and then to make the image, we're going to use a stencil. So you can use um, regular bond paper like this or a shape protector. I got this from uh, your uh, any um, office supply store. Or you could also use glue for a stencil like this. Uh, regular school glue or, mo or Mod Podge works fine. Uh, and to make the stencil, you will need markers or pencils to just uh, create a design that you want. And to cut out the stencil, you will need uh, a craft knife. Like, I've got this... Uh, exacto knife but uh a, any box cutter will, will do as well and uh you should also be working on a nice surface like i've got my self-healing <laughs> cutting mat i think that's what this thing is called so that you don't scuff up your uh, your mother's tables uh we'll also be using uh an old Cre uh, credit card or gift cards. I'm using a Subway gift card. <laughs> not not sponsored, not sponsored. And also paint. I'm just using regular acrylic ink. You could use actual printmaking ink or, or poster paint or whatever kind of paint. Uh, what else do we need? Oh, yes. Yeah, so you should also use them um, like... I have a little spray bottle of water to keep things clean and some toilet paper just to keep everything nice and clean. And I'm not wearing a apron right now. But uh neither yeah. am I. Okay. <laughs> we can do this. Thing. I'm using uh, actual screen printing ink so it's going to and I'm wearing all black and I'm using like white. So Yeah, I'm using all black and but my my paint is blue so that'd be cool okay but <laughs> yeah we're gonna be risky it's okay i'm, I'm gonna yeah I'm yeah gonna living you. life on the edge that's what we've been doing this whole year haven't we uh. <laughs> all right so we've got our uh, station clear first step is taking our embroidery hoop and unscrewing this thing at the top and separating our embroidery hoop like that. I've already cut my uh, my my fabric. I I like this fabric, so I have been reusing it a lot <laughs> over the over the week. But um, I mean, never in that no harm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I just cut uh my my stocking into a a rectangular shape and lay it on top of this bottom half of the of the embroidery hoop like that. And then put our top half, the outside half of the embroidery hoop on top. And slip it on like that. And then we'll just have to tighten it. Do -do -do. I've done this a couple of times on this a piece of fabric so I know how far I have to um, pull it so, until it's at a good uh, tautness that I, that I like. This is that ring of blue paint. <laughs> okay, I mean, that, that, I, I mean, it's helpful, right? Yeah. See, I cleaned mine so well, it's like I don't even know what, where, or how taut oh, about it, so we're gonna see some needle prints from Emma today. <laughs> So yeah. that's totally fine. And I'll show my prints after. Um, yeah. And as I'm, as I'm pulling the fabric um, to the edges of the hoop, I'm also tightening this at the top a little bit. So slow and steady will win the race for this? Yeah. OK. Now you tell me. OK. Oh, it's did you rip it again? <laughs> <laughs> well. No, I left it as is last 
from the last time like I put it together. But uh, just for our viewers watching or listening in, uh, the last time I put my stocking onto the embroidery hoop, it snapped like it snapped apart and like hit me in the face. Oh. Uh, and if that brings anybody joy, uh, you're welcome. Um, but it just scared me. So I was like, okay, this is my sign. I need to print or make art, period, again, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you have to make more art. <laughs> yeah. The the god, <laughs> the art gods are like, Emma must make more art. But yeah, uh, we'll be we'll be pulling the fabric until it's tight. Yeah, I like that. That's good. Yeah. And then we could set this aside for now. Uh, the next part is uh, our stencil. And I already have a design ready. This is uh, the design I chose. And it's what's a, it like? Sorry, go ahead. Ready? I was going to ask what's it about? Like, is there something special that, it, that it, or, is this emblem special to you in any way? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I combined two of my favorite things, um, bird and printmaking, <laughs> into this little uh, personal emblem, basically. Yeah, and uh, it went through a couple iterations until I was happy with this design. And how I'm making it, um, I'm going to cut out uh, these areas that I marked. And uh, when you're working with a stencil like this, you have to make sure that all of the parts are like connected so you don't accidentally like cut out a, a piece of detail that you like uh, that you want to include actually. Okay. Yeah. So can I be as deep? Okay. I, I know yes. I've already done it, but just for the people out there, you can be as detailed with this like for what we're doing today, can we be as detailed or does it have to be as like simplified? Um, I guess it depends on the size. My my embroidery hoop that I'm working with today is like six inches. Uh, the largest you could probably do is eight inches. Okay. And that's just a little bit um, larger than that. Um, you could probably do something more complicated than this, but uh, um, you might risk losing small details like this. But mm -hmm. uh, if you have, uh, what's it called, experience in doing stencil art for like spray painting, this is kind of like that. So you, you, you've seen how detailed some stencils for graffiti art can be sometimes. So the, okay. the limit really is up to your imagination. You could be complex like this, or I have a class, I had a classmate, her whole project for silk screening was just a bunch of um, circles and oval shapes. <laughs> okay, because I did a circle. So I was like, I'm like, I'm not as like, even like with what you're showing right now, I don't think I could cut that properly. And I clearly didn't cut a perfect circle. So. <laughs> That's fine. No, uh, nothing's perfect. I, don't, I cut myself on that. Uh, we're just going to have some happy accidents. <laughs> oh, well, I've had many of those then trying to create yeah. this. So, <laughs> so I've had to like tape, re tape it up because it's just falling apart, or the tape's falling apart. So I'm taping up tape. So. <laughs> So the next part is we're going to start cutting this. This is a, uh, I've just traced my design onto a piece of bond paper. And now I'm cutting it with my X-Acto knife. Yeah. I don't have to uh, press so hard because the material is really thin. It's just regular bond paper. And uh, this is the part of printmaking that I find really therapeutic 
the cutting yeah, or the carving. Yeah. How's your stencil going? You you're just doing the circle? Yeah. There's nothing to it. Nothing exciting. <laughs> Other than when I go to, I, I think I got to tape it up again just to, like, make sure it doesn't, like, I, I tried to, lam so I laminated my stencil with uh, packaging tape because I'm using, uh, I guess, uh, what's it called, uh, like, baking paper or oh, yeah. parchment paper, but it's, like, yeah. from the dollar store, so, like, if it gets wet, it just, like, disintegrates, so it's, like, <laughs> weird parchment paper so i had to like yeah i had i just i have to yeah i might have to put another few slices on it but yeah it's just a little circle i was thinking like um what's it called i, I couldn't think of anything like more figurative to like uh how do i say like to cut out because i was like mm -hmm. oh i don't like it or how it's gonna come out because i think at first i was gonna do uh so like with my photo work, I usually work with uh, flowers. So I was like, oh, let's draw like one of my favorite flowers, the hydrangea. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't going to work because it's like such tiny detail. And I'm like, OK, but hydrangea flowers are circles, like the petals. Sorry, it's more specifically yeah. the petals are. So I'm like, OK, let's just do a circle. Um, so I didn't want to do an oval because because that looked really weird when I made the first stencil. So like I think this is like stencil number like three where it's like, OK, I'm going to just do a circle. And it's gonna be centered in the uh, in the uh, like I drew a circle on like of the embroidery hoop, and then I wanted to center that circle so it was like easier to like register with. I don't know why. Yeah. Not my mind where they're both gonna be separated. Um, but yeah, the circle on the stencil is not centered. <laughs> so <laughs> I really was trying too hard, and I was like, oh well, you know what say la vie you know and just like kind of leave it at that um but i know i wanted to try out my stencil before this so and i'll show my other prints um as well but i want to try and make like this time i'm like gonna try and make like perfect prints awesome or at least, or at least try you know are we gonna have a edition of a like a hundred circle maybe <laughs> i Honestly, uh, hmm, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I don't really do additions. <laughs> yeah. It, each one is uh, completely unique. Mm -hmm. Like, do I have to addition this? No, everything's going to be an artist print. <laughs> yeah. No, like, how do I say, like, I'm kind of like, I, or I go between the two. So it's either, um, well, depending on which kind of printmaking I do um it's really like it really depends so if i'm doing like say copper etching uh specifically uh i have to do additions because it's just like it's the same plate and just wearing down the same plate and nothing changes dramatically but like when it comes to like screen printing i'm like no there can be like millions of additions like mass production just like everywhere my studio is just covered like plastered with all of them on the wall That's and just awesome. like, okay. or and i also yeah so go ahead when i when i do my lino is like every single one is mi m uh misregistered every single one is like a different color <laughs> mm -hmm. oh well if i'm not doing an addition i don't have to make everything perfect and exactly like <laughs> can we uh use any paper or would heavier paper be more recommended someone asked twitch um i'm just using regular bond paper and this has been working pretty well for me so far i think yeah. um like bristol board i guess from the dollarama could work too as long as it's uh thin and not too heavy but you probably don't want to go much thinner than just a regular bond paper because then uh, it'll get wet easier and then it'll fall apart when we uh, when you're put it. things over it. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I use paper. I just use like regular A4 paper, and I'm like, well, like first print into it. I'm like, oh well, circle's gone. Whatever. All right. So now that we've cut it out, look at that. Uh, it's time to print our image. So I've got my regular printing paper here, and I'm just gonna put my stencil on top of it like that. And does it matter what kind of paper you print on or any like? I'm just using regular bond paper just cause that's what I've got at home. I really wanted to go out and buy some, uh, what's it called? Like scrapbooking paper mm -hmm. or different color paper, but I, I didn't. <laughs> so, so I just have this, yeah. I'm gonna try oh, yeah, because I'm I'm gonna try on uh, printing on like homemade paper, like the better. Ooh. Um. So yeah, usually, see that goes. usually those heavier papers they hold um wet um wet mediums really well, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Even like uh, what's it called? You know that there's like that mixed media uh yeah. it's a book. It's like blue. It's mixed media XL or whatever. Oh. Uh, you can get find like it or, or what? No, I'm saying like paper to print on. Like th there's like a oh, yeah. there's like a media paper that's also good. Uh, maybe a little bit too textured, but yeah. I mean, if I, I mean, if we want to get into paper, like I, yeah, from speedball. Yeah, I, I that's why I just left that like I made homemade paper and that's it. Because like once you get me talking about paper, like. Just everybody, either I excuse myself or it's a live stream. So <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. So for the next step, we've got our stencil on top of the, our printing paper. This is going to be my first proof paper. And we're going to take our embroidery hoop with the flat side down the side like that. I should have trim this oh well <laughs> and put our embroidery hoop on top of our stencil and then with our paint we'll just squeeze some on the inside of the hoop like that does it matter how much to put or uh to start we'll we'll just have a little bit like Okay, because like how much you would put line. on your toothbrush, I guess. Uh, two toothbrushes. Okay, because um, I just like poured like <laughs> I, I squeezed the whole toothpaste out. How about that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to, yeah. And then well, I just because, threw it all over yeah. my counter or yeah, my table. You don't want too much ink, or else uh, we'll have some over inking, and you'll you'll run the risk of losing details, but yeah. Well, so it's we'll a circle, just... okay. Mine's oh, a circle. That. Well, it's a circle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to be salty, but it's just a circle. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, though. It's a, it's a beautiful circle, I'm sure. You yeah. want the perfect circle, right? Well, I hope so. so. I'm standing up for this. So, okay. Yeah. I'm just standing up, uh, have one hand on my embroidery hoop to keep it in place, and one uh, one hand with the card. And at a, about 45 degree angle, we're just going to scrape it all the way down. Okay. And there are some places here that we missed. Yeah, I messed, I over inked because I clearly put too much, still too much. <laughs> but it's okay. it's okay. We we love we love the circle or blob, but it's okay. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do to check on my print, I'm going to lift the stencil paper, this one, and the embroidery hoop at the same time. We've got a little bit over inking here and I missed the beep 
but that's okay because uh, that's what printmaking is about. Uh, trial and error until it becomes perfect. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I can just set this aside. I'll clean up my station a little bit. Okay. Just put like, everything in my... to clean up because I just like spilled ink everywhere. So I'm trying to like, <laughs> I'm trying to like not freak out because <laughs> I'm also not wearing an, an apron. So living life on the edge, Emma. <laughs> All right, I can do this again. I might need more ink. Or paint. I'm using paint, actually. I call it by the real name. That's fine. I think I think we all understand. <laughs> all right. Okay. Let's see if yeah, you really gotta have like something like water, like water and like rags on hand. Cause I find I, I made a I made a holy mess. Like and I did it on like my cutting board. So I can just throw the cutting board out the window. But um yeah, I'm just trying to like clean up <laughs> the mess I made. Oh well today's not my day. My my stencil came apart. Oh no! <laughs> this, this doesn't usually happen. All the other rehearsals that we had. I know! My, my stencil was like great. <laughs> but yeah, that, yeah. Sorry, that's what can happen sometimes, I guess. But that's now, okay. you know, earlier, uh, you had shown like a bottle of glue. Is there any way, yeah. like, how to? Like, what would someone use that for? Like, for this demo, what would you use that for? Yeah, it's okay. I, I, it, it's okay if, it, if this stencil is a bust, because I've got this one too. <laughs> um, what I did here is, I drew a, a picture of a butterfly. I don't know if you can see it clearly. Um, like this. Oh yeah, I can see it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I drew a picture of a butterfly and I traced it with uh, glue and like spread the glue around with uh, like, toothpicks and stuff. And then I let I let the glue completely dry. That That's why I did this earlier. So now that is completely dry, I can... I can try and print it on this. Okay. Um, someone's asking if we can print on shirts as well. Oh yeah, this uh, silk screen is actually how like band shirts are made. I guess. I love it. That's so specific. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> There's no better way of explaining that. Yeah. Uh, you could silk screen on any flat surface, and and. If you're going to do it on a t-shirt, you're going to be doing it with fabric paint. But yeah, you could you could totally print on a t-shirt. I think I got a, a quasi-perfect circle. And I think I'm going to just leave it at that. I printed a few times. Ooh. Yeah. I got an interesting butterfly. Okay. So this would be, would this be more like, I guess, um the image would be inverted when if you use uh glue yeah because um uh, i use the glue to what's it called um, to mask okay the, yeah so what the glue does it acts like like photo emulsion does in in like industrial or commercial silk screening it blocks some of the holes so that the ink can't pass through so then 
anywhere that has the glue will be the color of the paper instead of the color of the ink. Okay. Yeah, that I, I that method I think I, I'm more familiar with <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> I'm just looking at my screens right now, like underneath my table, and I'm like, I miss you so much. <laughs> I'm like, but I wanted to try this. Like when you brought this idea to me, I was like, yes, I want to learn how to do this in case like I want to do like mini prints like on the fly. Uh, especially if I want to, okay. like I'm thinking about traveling. So, Ooh. but like in the far future, in the far future, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> No one's traveling right now. Uh, someone's saying it, your print looks like a lithograph. Oh my gosh, I haven't heard that word in so long. Oh gosh, neither have I. Oh, I miss, uh, I miss, I miss yeah, you miss this video. I guess we have to explain what is a lithograph, except I can't remember what it is. Do you know what um, that is? <laughs> I think the only the one thing that comes to mind off the top of my head is you remember when we used we did uh stone lithography that like oh right that's the only way i can explain it where you just put in you literally like etch an image with acid into a stone and then you just print from that you have to seal it and then you can start printing with it basically so it's like it's almost like i want to say it's like lino but you're actually in like putting an image onto a plate or onto a literal like like eight kilo minimum like stone so you're putting it on a rock um you can also throw your back out picking up that rock not that i have so any is experience it, so is it like copper etching except heavier yeah <laughs> i had to think about that yeah you can actually yeah no you actually like can't well unless you're like you're really strong and then i applaud you but um uh, I'm not, and I like almost like fell, or a rock, a rock almost fell on me. Oh, yeah, man. yeah. Uh, I remember I I would use those litho rocks to like uh, weigh down my my postcards while they dried so that they would dry <laughs> flat. <laughs> uh, someone's saying it's right. printing on a stone or metal plate. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I just thought stone because. What's the how dangerous can we make print make not sound? If that makes I'm sense. I'm just cleaning up now. I'm using my little spray bottle to spray myself. Yeah, I made a holy mess. This mess just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> so. I'm not able to get to my kitchen sink um to clean these out right now so i'll just spray them with my little spray bottle i oh. use this to uh to water my succulents <laughs> i mean multi-purpose we, we love yeah. that um, i just ripped my stocking <laughs> oh <laughs> okay cool i was just trying to clean it clearly i'm not okay well I'm not even going to finish that sentence. Um, it, you don't but, need to put that much force when you're cleaning it. Like, no, I'm trying to make it taut because I was like, oh, maybe I'll try again. Oh, right. But this is the print right. god telling me stop. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop while you're behind, Emma. Yeah. Uh, this is the cleanup process. Just um, lightly washing the paint out with a just soap and water is all you need. They're your best. They're your best friends in a print studio. Period. How <laughs> about that? Yeah, and uh, paper towels, I guess. Uh, I used to have shop towels. They're like heavy duty for for working on cars and stuff. <laughs> but now, now yeah. I just have a uh, toilet paper. <laughs> in my studio i mean that's a hot commodity for it like oh. <laughs> okay all right yeah so that's the that's that's print uh silk screen print making at home what we made today this 
one kind of reminds me of um, cyanotypes. Mm -hmm. Cause they're, they're mostly blue and the image is white. While we're talking, I might, I might try and make another stencil. Okay. But yeah. That, that, um, can I show my prints? I'm just in the sense yeah. of like, I drew on top of them. Cause I know, like, I know my next question or next thought was going to be, um, can you add to it? Um, <clears throat> And I just went in for it, so I was like, of course you can. I'm just going to just show everybody rather than ask. But I did both, so thank you uh, for listening to my tangent. <laughs> Are we going to – you're going to show off your print? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Hello. Uh, Hold on, I'm trying to grab them. Um, so I did it on homemade paper that I made like a very long time ago. Um, and I did it with glitter. So if glitter just like puffs out onto my setup here, then that's going to be great. Um, these were prints I did like the other day, if you can see that. Um, I decided these circles if you couldn't tell, um, we're going to be planets. Uh, clearly I don't know all my planets. Um, cause I only did, <laughs> I did like Mars, earth and Saturn. Ooh. It, it can look like Saturn. Um, Ooh, yeah. so oh, yeah, that's so cool. Watching glitter fall. <laughs> so I tried to make it like a galaxy. Um, I used, Oh, I forgot what they're called. They're like those, I want to say, um, oh, it's in frame. Uh, these are specific, these are specifically like window markers, chalk markers or whatever. Um, but there's a proper name for it that um, I'm having a brain fart. I, th I want to say polka, polka, if that's the word. Um, those are even better. Um, just to continue showing. Um, but these are all dying or like uh, frozen because my studio is outside and with the <laughs> it's like I mean it's get it, today's warm like today's supposed to be 14 but last or yesterday was like uh, I want to say I could be exaggerating I could be like six degrees um, well, you're outside in the Canadian winter <laughs> my studio is well, in my basement <laughs> so um and then here are my prints from I only did three because I kind of like got very self uh, <laughs> self conscious about my prints because usually I don't print like this, but it's okay. I love them all. They're all my prints are my children, but I did that. I'm thinking about cutting, maybe I'll just do it now. I'm gonna just cut it in half. Yeah, I'm gonna commit to it. I'm gonna commit, Frey. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. All right. Oh, and it's still wet. <laughs> nice. So yeah. I just cut it down and then I'm going to add <clears throat> when they, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, and then when they dry, cause clearly this one is not dry. Um, I'm going to draw more on the, more on it with, uh, those chalk markers. Um, this one I just found like right before we started our live stream and there's, that one has a heap ton of glitter. So I'm not going to shake it too much. <laughs> cause it's blue glitter as well. Yeah. It's literally, how do I say, like, I, if you were to name something that was like, oh, that could be found in a studio, I most likely have it. Um, glitter being one of them, and I have tons of it. Uh, I think in my four or five years being in this studio, it's just, I've had like one accident, and that was just because I, like putting glitter on a canvas and then I kick the canvas over like first. And then what did the, did the glue not it wasn't dry yet? no it wasn't dry. So <laughs> I, yeah and I have like a white carpet I stand on so I fell on oh. that carpet. Uh so yeah <laughs> it's just and how many years ago was that incident and how much glitter is still in your carpet? <laughs> well luckily like my studios in my backyard i can be more specific so i have a hose so i just like 
washed that carpet to like I was, I, or it was either throw it out or wash it and i was like oh well it's a used carpet like i just need to stand on it when i'm especially when i'm screen printing uh so yeah i'm trying to think of when it when it happened i want to say like i want to say like 2017 just just because um but yeah it was very traumatic because then my mom was like don't bring it in the house and i was like i need to sleep and i need to bathe and like i need to glitter was everywhere like just like in my hair on my clothes in my ears up my nose um canvases are now in my room so sometimes i just find a speck of glitter just like right on my face uh which is joyous when i have to go into professional meetings uh yeah How's the cleanup for you, Frey? Oh, it's going well, yeah. But uh, I guess it's uh, time for our history lesson. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I will start to set that up. Okay. All right, so silk screen printmaking. This is a image from our lovely campus, our home away from home, uh, Sheridan campus. The, the student in the picture is wearing an apron, <laughs> which is what you're supposed to do, not like me and Emma. <laughs> and those are the, the, the large silk screens uh, that's used in like the industry. We just made miniature version. Yeah. So, uh, what is silk screening? Uh, it well, what's printmaking first? It is the method of transferring an image from a matrix to a substrate. I got that from dictionary.com. Uh, but what that means is just um, it's transferring like your paint or your ink from from one surface to another basically um, and there are different kinds of printmaking today we did silk screen printmaking i heard someone in the chat mention like uh, lithography that's also another method of printmaking and uh, me and emma we also have experience doing uh, copper etching and and lino cutting because these are all like relief or intaglio usually it involves like flipping the image over like flipping the actual plate with the ink on it onto the onto the paper but silk screening it's it's like we're using the stencil to uh, immediately transfer the the ink onto the the ground <laughs> So how does silk screen printmaking work? Uh, it uses a mesh and parts of it are blocked out to prevent ink from passing onto the paper. So traditionally the mesh is made out of silk or nylon. Today we use sheer stockings. And uh, in the industry we use photo emulsion, which is this uh, stinky green stuff that hardens when it's exposed to light. Uh, but we use like, glue and a piece of paper taped up with scotch tape. <laughs> yeah, you, you could use anything really. Uh, the history of silk screening. When I said you could use anything, like traditionally in ancient China, People used like leaves and stuff that they would just press the leaf on the on the paper and then the silk screen on top and then you'll have a shadow image of the sh of the of the leaf. So it started in ancient China and because uh, they were using silk for the silk screen. 
the the secret of how to produce silk did not reach Europe until like the 18th century. The the Romans and the Ottomans they had to do some spy versus spy stuff to to finally procure the the secret to making silk. Uh, silk was very valuable. Uh, by the early 1900s, uh, the, this American dude was able to patent his own uh, technique to do silk screen printmaking with, uh, with a silk screen and rubber squeegees, and it was used to print wallpaper and fabric. So different silk screen techniques. Uh, there, there are different kinds like CMYK, which is a technique that a lot of people probably seen before but don't know it. Uh, it's used in like those inkjet printers. Uh, where, when your printer says like, you need yellow to print this image, that that's why you need <laughs> CMYK. Um, it's really cool how it how CMYK printing does. Why? Oh, okay. <laughs> the, this, uh, this GIF in the middle is showing how CMYK printmaking works. It's like there are four layers of the same image, but it's made out of different dots in each area. And each of those layers is a channel. And, and uh, when those dots overlay, uh, over each other, they make this uh, optical illusion that turns the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black dots into the whole spectrum of colors. And this technique of printing is was used a lot in it in comic books and in newspapers today. And Spot color is another printing technique. That's basically what we did today, uh, applying a solid color onto the surface. Uh, in the top corner, you could see someone using this technique to print onto a t-shirt. So yeah, you, you could totally use silk screening to print on a t-shirt and you could even use it to print multiple layers. But uh, Unlike CMYK, you only need four layers to to make a whole spectrum of color, uh, because each each layer that we're doing in a spot color is just one color or a gradient. You will need uh, multiple layers uh, and and print one color on each. And silk screen printing as art throughout the century. Uh, re not recently, but in the 19 after 1940s, there was Andy Warhol, the the king of pop art, and he used silk screen printmaking to blur the lines between like mass-produced cultural I icons and and unique works of art. Because when you think art, you think like, oh, this painting that is so unique and can only be made by one person. You don't think of um, like a mass produced object like a, like the Campbell soup, soup prints that he did. But yeah, he, he's a cool guy. And uh, Roy Lichtenstein is a personal favorite of mine. He's not exactly a printmaker he is a painter but his unique style was inspired by the ben bay dot uh printing technique and you can see that in his he has tiny little dots that he paints by hand and that's so cool and silk screen painting in toronto because we're <laughs> Toronto. There's this cool studio called uh, Fabled Creative, and uh, 
they do some pretty cool stuff. I like them. They they blend together geometric shapes and organic forms, and oh, I just love their aesthetic. And there's also this great place called Open Studio. It's on 401 Richmond, and they've got uh, a great studio space for artists to create their thing. And and they they've got equipment and space, and you could even uh, exhibit their work as well. And here are some helpful videos from the YouTubes and my sources because you need to have your sources. And that's all. I guess we can uh, get everybody else on <laughs> on the stream now. I'm going to try and make another stencil. <laughs> um. So this is the part where we all share each other's um, art <laughs> or what we've been working on. I'm just waiting for everyone to uh, get on the uh, stream. <laughs> We might be having some technical difficulties, but uh, that's okay. So the weekend is finally here. And, oh, Sam, hello. I just wanted to share, because um, you said to share some art that we've been making. Um, yeah. I, they're not screen prints, but they are using stencils. I made Ooh. these uh, little, this little card. Oh. <gasps> With a stencil and gouache. Oh, that's adorable. There, and then I also have uh, this little stencil I made of people dancing. Oh, cool. That's so cute. I wish I, the stencils that I actually used are somewhere buried in my yeah. room. I was going to say, let's see the stencils, like, show us. Um, um, but they're, they're literally just... Um, I'm doing print too, um, and Sheridan, and we were doing stencils because we were supposed to do screen printing, but mm. can't do that because of the pandemic. So we were making cutout stencils out of um, binder stuff, and I got addicted to it. So, yeah, no, I remember when um, can be addicting. <laughs> yes, no, okay. First and foremost, because I recently graduated from school, just to give everybody a better idea. Um, Congratulations! <laughs> I'm trying to make art, art gods, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the first, I think the first class I ever took when I was in school was print was printmaking, and I was like, I don't know what this is. I don't feel comfortable doing this. And then, I, and then like, after going through, like, there's the basics, like uh, there's lino, there's woodcut, um, there's oh my gosh, I'm always forgetting the one. Uh, when I did it, we had to scratch it. Do... Sorry. Oh no, not calligraph. Is it? No, uh, you engraving. It was like just you. Oh right. Plastic into the plexiglass. Yeah. Isn't that et etching? I think etching, etching is, is like, like, a, like a yeah. is etching a chemical process. Like, yeah, that's you know, yeah. Air, yeah. Like the acid literally eats away into the copper, but yeah. then. But then engraving would be like you use a burr 
Mm-hmm. Is it called a burr? <laughs> or I'm trying to think. Like for me, it would be like more like using like uh, sharpened uh, diamond tip t- tools, if that makes sense. Um, Ooh, diamond. Yeah, we like so. I remember in like first year printmaking. That's why I said uh, ple- like using plexiglass. So we tested out how to print or how to like scratch into a plate with plexiglass, or at least I did because I had no idea what. Um, copper etching was um but then after figuring it out now i have now i'm like i have I'm, I'm trying to find my plates i like i have all my huge plates somewhere here which i can show later um someone's asking what made you choose to pursue printmaking hmm i just really fell in love with it um when i was in uh I know it was like the second year of of university. We had to, because uh, in the program that I'm in, like you have to take all of the first year and second second uh, year um, levels of the studio courses, the the uh, the printmaking, the painting, the sculpture, and the drawing and stuff like that. So I had to take all of them. And growing up, I always liked painting and drawing. And I never really experienced printmaking until until uh, university, and and the teacher was really great. <laughs> Lisa Neighbor was like the best teacher, and just her enthusiasm and energy with the with printmaking and like teaching, like oh, it was contagious, and I just fell in love with it. Yeah, so like when I work any other like uh medium i work very small for some reason i don't know like that's just i guess that's how i think but when it comes to uh specifically uh printmaking and photography i think like the size of like a wall if i can be more specific so like maybe like seven feet by like six or ten feet go big or go home right yeah and the plates match up to it as well i found my um I know Sam was talking about like etching plates. If I don't like fall backwards with it, because, and I even have it labeled. Oh gosh, um, still has ink on it. Um, maybe the size. I'm gonna just try and bring in a frame. The size of me, or whatever. But um, hi. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in frame, but yeah. And there's more to it. Um. I really used a uh, computer numerical system, control system to etch my pl- or to sc- to create the image on the plate because uh, if I had to carve out every single I think this is like two by two by or like one by two feet foot plate something like that uh, I'd still be carving it out to this day <laughs> <laughs> so and it saves a lot on the wrist uh, when printing on it actually that's where your wrists start hurting. Yeah, oh my gosh, like carving out all of those lino lino stamps really really screwed up my wrists for a while. <laughs> I mean, now you have all these pr- like these stamp you li- you literally have like stamps like just yeah. a, like more of I think it was um and correct me if I'm wrong, it was about um oh, I don't know the word now. Uh alchemy that's the word I'm thinking of. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I, or you start, I guess some of them can be alchemy, yeah. Yeah, it started off that way, but then it turned into food. Yeah, it was more food oriented. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I checked, because I was like, ooh, food? Yes. I love I mean, that. they're all science, right? And then, like, science started in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Mark Fell. We love you. <laughs> I just, I just like, I just like printmaking more than painting because, I I guess, like painting that you you put so much effort into just one thing and and you can't see like the all the process behind it, all the trial and error behind the painting, unless you like saw like from beginning to end the painting process. And yeah. then it, if you're 
if you if all that effort wasn't like exactly what the teacher was uh, looking for, then you won't get the mark. And like, oh, the okay, cool. you, like the the art and art history teachers are great, but like I went to art fundies as well, and mm -hmm. oh, the the paint the painting teacher from fundies, oh, he ripped into us real real hard. But, but uh, with printmaking, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't have to be perfect, unless of course you're doing like editions. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, don't forget about the editions. Yeah, editions. Uh, I'm not doing an edition. Everything is an artist print, <laughs> so yeah. So it can be a bunch of trial and error, and you. I just feel you have so much more freedom to experiment and like um combine different images. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's my, why I like. Yeah, sir, go ahead. Printmaking. Yeah. Uh, my marker exploded. On what? My... How? I pressed too hard, Frey. <laughs> Did it explode onto your page? Yeah, I'm trying to make it work. So it was like. Oh, cool. And that's oh. Like, like, you could. So I can't get my lefts and rights. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah. I'm trying to smooth it out. It's not working. <laughs> know what uh, Bob Ross says about like happy little accidents, right? Yeah, but it almost like <laughs> it's like the whole ink conundrum again. It, it almost went everywhere, and like, I like it. I contained the wildfire before it started. Did Did you see like your your the your life flash before your eyes? Oh no, my mom's gonna kill me. <laughs> no, I was gonna be like, oh, I, I'm. I was gonna like be annoyed with myself because I just bought these pants. Uh, because quarantine is just uh lovely and i just need i you know the only thing i didn't have the, or the one thing i didn't ever own was a pair of sweatpants and i can't wear jeans just casually in the house like oh, i'm just gonna lay down and fall asleep with a pair of jeans on you know so and just like it always looked like i'm going out or or about to like or about to yeah either i'm about to leave or i'm about to go shower that's how it would look i i love sweatpants like I wear sweatpants all the time. I don't think I've worn a pair of jeans in a year. Oh my god, the other marker exploded. <laughs> oh my gosh, where do you buy these markers? I don't know. I don't I don't even remember where I bought these, to be honest. Um, but I'm not gonna <laughs> try to not freak out, but yeah, I'm trying to make it work. Um But sorry, you were saying um, before my marker rudely interrupted you. I don't know. Were we talking about pants? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were talking about pants. You said you like you like sweatpants. Yeah, I love sweatpants. I mean, who doesn't? Like, yeah. Well, apparently, like, do you like sweatpants? Because. How now can I you do. not own a pair of sweatpants until well, now this I year? Own, now I own a pair. Like, that's how crazy, like, I am. Or it's gotten to in my life. Um, I also found another, speaking of crazy, I also found those homemade canvases I made back yeah. when I was in school. This one's really nice. Um, yeah. Shout out to John from the wood shop for letting yeah. me. John's the best. I think this is yeah, this is, like, clearly four inches. The other one was, like, two. Um, yeah, the only way this is held together is with a nail that's four inches long, so I'd be very careful. <laughs> with a four-inch nail for a four-inch frame? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my Do God. Do they really have no... Surely oh. the, there are oh. shorter nails than that. Oh, there are. But I, but I wanted to really test my limits with power tools because uh, especially... <laughs> Especially in my third year, I had to really get over the fact that, like, I didn't, I needed to, like, be in a wood shop and I couldn't handle uh, the sounds of power tools, especially uh, saws. Um, so I tested my limits by creating these canvases, which, uh, so my limit to getting close to the blade is four inches away from the blade. <laughs> so, yeah. And then I have more of them. I think I have, like, ten of them. And I remember, like, whenever I'd make them, I'd be like, okay, John, I'm going to pay you for them. And he's like, no don't even because i would use scraps right 
Yeah. Um, like especially the one pieces with um what is it called? Uh knots in it. Uh so some of these canvases, like if thank God for like those nails on the sides of them. I'm trying to see with this one. No, this one I think was a good the better one. Um there's one like with a with a knot in it that just like broke off as I was making the canvas. So I was like, eh, we love it anyways. Uh, but then I stapled the back of it, and it just didn't look right. So, yeah. So are you trying to make a new screen, or yeah. are you doing a new? Are you doing a, just a screen portion, or just or the? Uh, oh, I forgot what the other one was. Uh, the glue stencil. method. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another stencil because like. Okay. <laughs> We we did so many rehearsals and and the stencils yeah. were great <laughs> and then okay. well this is mine like and then the the, the day of the, the very second the the second print I make the the stencil breaks I'm gonna get more paint well can you see how much tape there there is on this like it I mean to me it's like shining in the light here but like oh my gosh. And the, and the tape's not sticking on to the uh, dollar store parchment paper, so it's like coming apart as well. So <laughs> we're making it work, you know. I think I'm gonna try and make um, what's it called a gradient. Okay. Okay. The marker exploded again because I thought I had I gave it a fourth chance. Oh my gosh! I need to stop. <laughs> I was trying to do an abstract, so I messed up on one of the prints I made, or the, there was a little piece of paper that I would uh, ripped in half. Um, and I wanted to make one look like an abstract bird, because I have two budgies at home. Uh, they love to scream. What are their names? Uh, hmm. <laughs> I was going to be like, thing one and two, because that's what I've, I started calling them right now, because they're, they're, they're testing me with how loud they can scream. Uh, when I'm not in the house, sometimes I can hear them on my driveway because they're situated oh in, my, uh, in my kitchen or in my dining area, which like fronts onto my driveway. So I can hear them. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, someone needs to like flip those windows so I don't hear them. So <laughs> someone's going to uh, someone's gonna call thinking like you have uh, a hostage in there. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what's going to happen. Um, but their names are Pickles and Colonel. Uh, Pickles always gets himself in a pickle, hence his name. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, he's also the troublemaker. And what does Colonel get into? Uh, Colonel's a sweetheart. He's shy, but a sweetheart. Um, he just started getting, like, I've had them since, I think it was, like, end of October, start of November, just around that time. I got them at seven weeks, so it was just a little, they were, like, little, like, baby burritos. Uh, in my hands, uh, or chi like small than chicken nuggets, rather. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I should. Go that's the analogy I should go with. Um, they're small than chicken nuggets, um, and now like they they're like an ounce each, which is not which you don't think is a lot, but I say so, like uh, I had to train them to like search on my hand, so like I do know I have noticed a difference uh, weight wise with them. So they're just like these little like. They're like now they're now they're like the weight of like a chicken nugget and a half or something, um, but yeah they're just they're too cute. I can't stay angry at them forever. Um, although they did chew up the back of my laptop case uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so <laughs> I literally had to run into my studio and like steal it with Mod Podge because it was just like my the back of my my laptop case is also. Uh, thank you who said to whoever said uh, I love the circle. I do too. <laughs> um, uh, I had to seal it because my back of my uh, laptop case is also of glitter. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, I live life on the edge with playing with glitter, I guess. Um, but yeah. Is it okay? Oh. I tried doing a, a gradient. It's got uh, some brown in there. Okay, okay. 
Yan pa yan. I'm trying to like doodle my bird, but like from the underneath. You know, have you ever seen that like duck meme where it's just like you should obey me, and it's like a duck, and you just see the front of like its chest, and then its bill is just sticking out. It's like I find that's like the funniest meme I've ever seen, like bird meme I've ever seen. A duck meme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm only I'm only for like the animal memes. Or like, uh, like the one with the two ladies yelling at the cat, or one lady yelling at the cat, and the other one's holding her back, and the cat's just like, "What did I do?" Oh, uh, the cat one. Oh, that, that one's great. I like. I kind of like this one. I didn't. Oh. I didn't re-ink my screen, so you could see the, um, the texture. Mm hmm. I like that. Yeah, I'm just looking at this drawing right now, and I'm like, I. This is why I work with just shapes. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to use the defect of this marker, like spilling, to be like my. Uh, I, I made a well on the piece, other piece on the other print I made, to like use as like a uh, almost like a paintbrush now. So I'm just dipping into it. Uh, and I'll show you what I'm doing. It's. <laughs> am I proud of it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I am, and I might put it next to my birds. They might chew this print, though. Uh, that I gotta be careful. But it'd be cute. I think I'm also gonna try and like decorate their cage for Easter. Hi, hi, Yang. Hi, Yang. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello, hello. How's the printmaking going? Um, you Very tell good. me. <laughs> you have a bird. Yes. Um. Did you do multiple layers? Is that oh what's gosh. going on? I just hold on here. I'll show you. I. That's I, adorable. I <laughs> but here's one. Like, this, this is the actual print. Mm -hmm. I found the glitter falling, but mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just a circle. <laughs> and we're gonna and I simple, simple is better, as they say. Yeah. Less is more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been drawing on top of them with these like <laughs> I'm gonna call them knockoff like pulp, those like chalk markers. They're very knockoff because like if I lift this one up, if you just uh -huh give it a minute it's gonna like drip but like yeah. over but yeah it exploded on this one so i can't <laughs> i have to wait till it yeah see there it goes like mm -hmm. is that typical in printmaking for like ink to leaks and all of that or like or like your accidents yeah no these are these are accidents. <laughs> um i'm just trying to find like another one Our whole practice is yeah, I tried, to, so I tried to cover it. So like, I would say like this part right mm -hmm. here, like, or, yeah, if I can be, if I can get my lefts and rights properly, uh, mm -hmm. this beat right here is like the the over inking, but then I covered it up with, with a marker. <laughs> so there we go. You know? Improvise, adapt, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody's um, asking, do you have any tips for aspiring printmakers? Uh, keep printing. Yeah, keep printing. Uh, uh, persistence <laughs> reveals yeah. the path. Yeah. Uh, no, I got, like, from, I got that from a video game, but it, it's true. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, yeah. Like um, for me, I know. Um, like even like what's happening here today. Like, like I guess my take when I when I do printmaking is like all experiences are good experiences, no matter how negative or how positive it could be. Like, that, that I don't care for, per se. But, like, what I do with that material, because now I'm, like, looking at this, like, how do I say, like, now I'm looking at it as, like, okay, now I've, like, actually, like, made material, or I printed on material. Now I have this hot commodity in my mind. I think it's expensive. I think it's Versace. I think it's Gucci, you know? Mm -hmm. It's and I'm, definitely I'm, like, Gucci. Like, the people, you know? I'm, like, I'm going to draw a planet. Or I'm gonna draw the bird. Hmm. 
Um, this is why I stick to printmaking kits. Um, Where's my good paper? <laughs> you can you can tell that I'm really trying with this. Uh, usually, and I think I I had mentioned it earlier. I'm trying to find. Hold on. Because my studio is half clean, half not, and that's just so. Like what you see is half not, <laughs> or half is. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's like that all around, but the table is just exploded with ink or whatever. That uh, usually means like a good thing. It means you've been hard at work. <laughs> hardly <laughs> means, work. Means your studio. You're using your home studio, which you know is very different for me and. I guess that can tie into like, you know, art making within the pandemic. How how has that been going for you guys? I have to say like, this is like the first time I actually, been, like, yeah, this would be the first time I've actually like gone into my studio. I've been in denial about mm -hmm. art making in my studio. Between like, okay, um, yeah. my studio is also occupied by uh, patio furniture. So I, sometimes I can't get in, but I like squeeze my way in today. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit in my chair, my studio chair, as uncomfortable as it could be, and I'm going to, I'm gonna print, and that could be now, like after doing this, printing could be anything, you know, you can literally make it at home, or like me, I just use like my screen. Mm -hmm. This is my baby. <laughs> this is what I'm more comfortable with, like just using, like I'm more into using like some really photography. Mm -hmm. Um. There's my good people. Chicken Little would be abstract. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, that's like such a cute one-off print that I could definitely see it being used, you know, as like a cute card, like cute, yeah. cute thing to put on the fridge to remind you of this day, you know, fun memory yeah. of streaming with a whole bunch of other people, streaming with Frey, Frey and having a good time yeah, printing. Yeah, he's going to be like, why? <laughs> But because like I don't have a pic, or, or I'm not gonna show pictures of my birds. I'm not gonna be that person on the internet. Mm. But I'll show a drawing of my bird yeah. on the internet. Do you think Colonel so, or Pickles will like? They'll under. Do you think they would recognize that it's them or? No, they're gonna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're. I, if I can be more like brief about it, they're in that stage of the, or they're at. No, hold on. How, let me think about this. It's their time of the year. A little bit aggressive with me. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm putting it very briefly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're going to demolish this. And this is on homemade paper. So this could be like, they could literally like just chew a piece of it and like throw it in the water and it'll like, disintegrate like instantly. Because mm. they have a bath in their cage. And I'm like, you don't use it for anything but destroy my friend's kids? Thank you. Honestly. But Frey, how has, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying Art to making in the pandemic. How's that been? Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm kind of lucky because, uh, uh, the way I work, um, I've got all my stuff at home already anyway. And, and I can work small like you. I don't need, um, a big studio with a big canvas to do my stuff. And I've been making um, like postcards and stuff, little things. And I've been, I've been trying to make this a uh, this workshop a thing. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's trending. Oh, is it trending, man? I, I'm so not with the times with technology. Like when when you had mentioned this, and you're like, and I I just I casually just said, let's just do it on Twitch. Let's do it on YouTube. Let's do it on like, Facebook. Facebook's where I'm at, and now. Facebook owns Instagram, so it's like the same thing. So whichever, however you want to look at it. So it's just like I'm I like, don't like Facebook. <laughs> um, hence why we're on Twitch. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but um, I don't even know if I still have my Facebook. I don't know if it's still active. But yeah, yeah. Other than than the gal, I only use it for the gal my the take action gallery. Other people didn't know what the TAG stood for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's all I did before. I came up Instagram posts, which Facebook owns. Mm -hmm. just, just a circle. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Welcome back, Sam. 
Oh, wow. I thought I would add to the conversation. <laughs> yeah. This you want to answer fun. how um, art making in the pandemic has been for you, Sam? Um, It's been stressful. I've been learning, um, having to learn new, uh, you know, like art making techniques, like um, specifically, and also working with like the sort of materials that I have. Like the first semester of school required a lot of trips to the dollar store to um, <laughs> materials because I was working, I was trying to make masks and stuff like that. And I was trying to figure out how to do that with no ventilation. And I had to give up, you know, I'm an oil painter and I had to like stop doing that for a while because mm -hmm. my, it's not safe to do that in my house. So. Yeah, and recently I was doing a photography or a video project, and I realized I'm like, wow, I really miss using the photo studio and their cameras because my camera and my house are not suited for um, those kind of projects. So, mm -hmm. so um, what kind of camera do you use? I'm intrigued. Uh, it's a. I'll actually show it. It's terrible. It's a Luminex. Uh, Canon. Where is it? Canon PowerShot um, SX520. It oh. has no viewfinder. Um, oh. It doesn't save, like, it doesn't save raw, so it's just JPEG. So the camera images are terrible. Okay. Um, it sucks. <laughs> well, I only ask because I'm like, because I'm into using uh, analog cameras. Mm. So film, um, and yeah. the digital. I like to use old cameras. So like my brother had given me a Canon. I want to say T two I for some reason. Like one of those. Like it, it. Oh, the sensors. Like I can see the pixels on it. So whenever I do photography for a day, and I go onto my computer, I'm like, see it now. It's like enlarged <laughs> the pixel. Um, but I try to make that work. So maybe I want your camera. <laughs> Gonna slide in there. I've got an know? old film camera too. I've got a Minolta X700, I think. And, okay. uh, and a Canon A1. Wow. <laughs> I mean, oh is it a Canon? I'm interested. I have, to, I have to find it. It's somewhere in my studio. <laughs> but uh, How do you think? Yeah. You Change. I like my film cameras a lot more than my digital camera because my digital camera use. it's it's become pixely. <laughs> okay, two I, one. I uh, did it again. <laughs> it exploded <laughs> with two pens. And on that note, somebody's asking, "How do you think creating art will change after the pandemic?" Um, hmm. I know uh, teaching art has really become something else now. Like uh, uh, I've interviewed some of my teachers, and the, they're, they tell they told me about like how they have to now um, teach from a distance and teach these kinds of art um, uh, art techniques that you you normally can't do. Mm -hmm. At home, like not everybody has um, uh, these kinds of supplies. No one has, no one has a home. silk screen just uh, like ready to go. Like, well, like I think of all of us. Uh, only you do. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not here. Then, to, I'm not here. To, uh, this but yeah. is the closest thing I've got to a silk screen, which I think is like the best. Like, like looking at mine, I'm like, I think this is like the best. Like, if I could have a small screen in my studio. Uh, that like, or if anybody wants to do it, it, it's like how to say it, it's very compact and you can just put it away or put it in a box or a drawer and just like tuck it away. Uh, mm -hmm. Here you get to see everything. So, <laughs> in my case, it, this is this is just gonna get lost. Like, oh, where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> it just blends in now. <laughs> so, yeah, and like we've had to like the art teachers have had to like translate these kinds of art techniques that they usually teach in in the classroom with their supplies and translate it to something that can be done at home with things that people can easily and affordably 
obtain to use at home. So I think maybe art will become more more accessible, maybe. Mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> yeah. I think there's also the idea, like, I think we're really seeing the faults in the system. Um, like you kind of were saying about the faults of um, our education uh, in terms of accessibility, because like, I know a lot of the teachers um, who have been talking to, like, are now, like, sort of acknowledging sort of the difficulties that students can face. And I think specifically, you know, seeing the difficulties that are appearing for people who are not living in this uh, city, like, um, uh, international students. Like, I can't imagine, like, if I'm complaining constantly about how much it sucks for me, I can't imagine, like, doing Zoom calls at three o'clock in the morning because of time difference and stuff like that. And I really think um, a lot of time, not even just in the education system, but like just we're seeing a lot of issues with accessibility. And like, I, I, I it scares me when people keep talking about how like, oh, this is kind of prompt us to use technology more. And like, I'm not anti-technology, but I don't think it's the solution and not everyone has accessibility, like yeah. access to yeah. like yeah. this equipment. Like I was saying, like, I don't have- Like not everybody has a great internet connection. <laughs> and we're oh, really seeing that now. Oh my God, yeah. Like, they all said like, oh, well, you know, and like, I think it's both good and bad thing because accessibility goes both ways, specifically in the online <laughs> world is if you have, you know, physical disability or like, um illnesses that prevent you from actually being in school and in, um, in person or like time zones or whatever, then virtual is a good thing mm -hmm. because then that means, Oh, like, Oh, you can't physically be in class. Now you can actually enjoy it. I can just come from at home. My bed and like have like pajamas on. Oh, I mean, who, I mean, what's stopping anybody from wearing pajamas to class? Oh I'm my gosh. Yeah. I remember, I remember in, in, in like my first year of university, do you do you remember Olivia Zalewski or something? Yes, Olivia Zalewski, yeah. Oh, Zalewski. Okay, that's how you pronounce her name. <laughs> but like she she came into our our exam in like her pajamas. It's like oh my gosh, I wish I was I wish I was that cool. But now now I go to class in my pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, times have definitely changed, um, like, technology-wise. Like, for me, it's, like, I guess more, like, I guess I use technology for, like, more, like, uh, for art making. Like, I'm more antisocial, if you could believe it. Uh, <laughs> You're antisocial and you, you, no, you yeah, this, done I'm our whole uh, social <laughs> campaign for this. <laughs> Well, well, okay. How about this? I'm more, I'm more like the late night owl. Like this right now is like my night. Like my, I guess day, days or nights, or yeah, I don't know. I sleep during the day. How about that? And I work throughout the night, um, which is like printmaker syndrome 101. Um, but yeah, trying to like, especially, especially like even doing this, trying to like get. Um, we're using like a different platform, StreamYards, which like thankfully uh, for if we didn't have Hyung, I don't know how we would have done this um, so seamlessly. And for Veronica, Veronica's behind the scenes or literally behind the, behind yeah. the computer, uh, just listening to us talk. Um, I wonder if she's saying hi. Let me just double check. Oh yeah, that's her. She's in the chat in the uh, <laughs> in on Twitch to you guys. Um, yeah, I, me, I, I, how do I say, like, for me to learn a program, it takes me, like, six to 12 hours to learn something, more so, like, uh, say, Photoshop or Illustrator, but, like, this, this, I'm, like, I'm, I'm trying to do it on my own time, and I'm, like, I need Hyung to, to coach me through this way, you know, <laughs> just, like, most organizations kind of have, like, the back-end tech person, and, um, like, literally, I think, Definitely the pandemic has had a lot of negatives, but I think mm -hmm. it's forcing us to turn into directions that we'd have never considered before, which, you know, give or take, it's like, it can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. Both practices, both like learning how to deliver services, both in terms of like learning and, you know, life in just general. Um, mm -hmm. I think 
I know we had like um, a couple of alumni come by yesterday and speak to students of our program. And one of the things that like really stood out to me was Diana and her talking about, you know, um, I think the big thing right now was talking about how art, like how we as artists were so inclined to grind and always be productive 24 seven. But it's really important for us to recognize that um, our bodies and as Diana put it, like it's kind of like nature and that we have these seasons where things will ebb and flow. And, you know, it's important for us to listen to that, to that, to, you know, recognize we don't have to be grinding out work 24 seven, especially like within a pandemic with so many stresses that come with the context yeah. of COVID-19, you know, um, and what I think really great of about this um, pandemic is it it is, at least for me personally, it is kind of allowing me to go back um, to art on like a craft basis. And, you know, if you all remember, like when you were first starting art at your desk as like a high school student, as a middle school student, yeah. learning the joy of yeah. like just creating. And I think for me, the biggest thing about um, like staying inside is for me to like rediscover that part of art. And, you know, as artists, we, we blend work and art and that can like really discourage us and it can really taint the practice and like see, like suck out all of the joy. So for me, that was kind of what I'm trying to strive um, mm -hmm. to do at home to kind of take those like work and art apart and then, you know, rediscover what I, what I enjoyed about my craft in the beginning. Mm -hmm. even though I'm not a printmaker, <laughs> but <laughs> well, yeah. The discussion is like, now it's like, we, it's more like an artist talk so we can talk about any like art medium craft, if you will. But yeah, just going off to the point with like talking about like burnout and like try, like in art making. Yeah, it took, it, like, I was in that group or that meeting as well. And I, it took everything out of me to be like, to not like turn on my mic and be like, I feel like that now, you know, it's just like, <laughs> It, how do I say, like, it's literally been a year since I've been out of the studio and I'm thankful for doing this and I'm grateful that, Frey, you came to me and you asked to do this because this is, like, the first time I literally made something in, like, a year. Like, that I'm, like, more in the sense of, like, actually going into the studio. Like, I do, like, digital stuff, but I do that in my room un under the window of safety, of safety and I'm, like, yes, like, <laughs> let's just make art here, you know? But, like, um that's all a blur um but this this is like if i can show it again <laughs> this you get your hands like, dirty yeah which i don't know how i feel about that again i remembered why i was like oh, i remember why i need to stop being it's got paint all over it <laughs> um throughout this whole conversation i kept using the markers thinking okay I'm, it's gonna be done because now i want to be perfectionist and like finish it uh yeah. it Coded multiple times. And I was like, so now I got flamingo. Ooh. Where's the head? Nobody knows. Nobody it's like knows. a really interesting shape. It almost looks like a it looks like a country to me, actually. <laughs> like a map of a country. Okay. Well at first I thought it was like a, a punk rock girl and uh like a portrait. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, it's actually a profile leaking. of a punk rock girl. Hold on, it's leaking every oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, it's just my desk area is just like a mess now with this marker. I'm just gonna put these away so I just don't use them. I might though. Um yeah. I'm just trying to see on how we're doing on time. We have like I think we've got ten minutes, minutes left. Yeah. I don't know if we want to continue talking or we'll just end it. Um but it definitely if people wanna keep asking their questions, they're more than welcome to and we can just We'll answer them. Uh, <clears throat> I think make we can today, Hyung. Oh, today, uh, you know, like I'm very blessed in that um, I have uh, I have work, so mm -hmm. I've been pretty occupied with that. Um, j I just got off um, speaking with Real Asian Film Festival, okay. um, so. I, w I was very blessed to get acquainted with them last summer and they're continuously working with me. Mm -hmm. um, and interesting enough, like the thing that we talked about was like art in the pandemic, like what was it like to make um, a film within the pandemic and what kinds of contexts? Uh, mm -hmm. Question for all, where do you, so we can wrap up with, I guess yeah. this final question right here. 
Um, so where do you see yourselves going forward during post-pandemic in the art world? Um, why don't we start with Sam? Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> don't don't could you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think I've been really enjoying, like um, Hyan said about um, doing craft and stuff like that. And I've been really enjoying that portion of my art making. Um, and I had to, similar to what you said, like I had to um, relook at the materials that I had and I started making, like got really into making jewelry, making um, books, which um, there will be a workshop on that, about yeah. making like books out of cardboard boxes that I find in my, my house um, and stuff like that. I think I'm kind of, I don't know, um, I definitely need to, like, I am going to be looking into more, learning more about technology and how to um, navigate um, more online systems such as StreamYard or other different venues, just because, you know, like we were saying earlier, um, the pandemic has shown us how important these skills are. So mm -hmm. I think going further, I'm going to be investing time into developing those skills on those kind of things so i can keep up with the times <laughs> uh. if you know of any cool programs please let us know <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say like tell us <laughs> uh i guess just to pass on the question how about you emma where do you see yourself going forward once the pandemic is over uh well right now i'm debating on well not really so much debating on art making, uh, but more so uh, curatorially, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm more, I've more. i gone more into uh, examining other people's art, if that makes sense. So right now, um, if, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, especially if you noticed uh, with the name tag, uh, I'm the curatorial organizer for the Take Action Gallery. Uh, the Take Action Gallery is specifically for art and art history students, and I exhibit their work. Um, for the sure fact that I graduated from the program last year. And there's this, and if anybody knows, uh, there's this Annie Smith spirit that lives on in that in this program. Um, and like, I want, I have always wanted to, uh, I, I've always tried to figure out a way how to, of how to stay connected with the art and art history program uh, outside of just prolonging my education. <laughs> so I kind of just went on the curatorial route and I've been doing that. And I hopefully I want to be continuing with that uh, post pandemic. Uh, but really, when it really comes down to it, uh, especially if I have to think making money wise, if you get curious for a second, uh, I'm thinking about actually going back to school, uh, being a first year in my 20s. Um, <laughs> you know, and going back to school to do, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, to do real estate. Mm. Yeah. Something totally different. <laughs> Which yeah. is very common for artists. And I would also say like being first year in your twenties is also very common for a lot of people. Okay. As well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Other people like, hey, you know? Um, because like especially when even for when I was in first year for art and history, I'm like, I know no one, no one's the same age as me. Uh what's, what's gonna happen? And then I see everybody I'm like, oh my goodness, there's other people. And then yeah. and then there were people who were like the the oldest person I met, I think she was she had she brought her kid with her just to class and I was like, Oh my god, like yeah. the kid had snacks and I was like, Oh my god, I love you. Like, yeah. you know, so Wait, like, I once had a classmate who was like 60. Yeah. Um, he had a granddaughter. Um, I, she was one of our classmates as well, but she was mm -hmm. definitely a senior. But um, like, it was pretty amazing that she kind of like brushed off the fact that she had this huge like age gap. And she's like, oh, I still want to learn art. And she went for yeah, it. Yeah, she so was, was she's amazing. Like, all of us were like, uh, in our late teens, early twenties, and then just her is just like sixty or seventy years old. <laughs> yeah. I love seeing her in our art history classes, and she always had something really great to say. Mm -hmm. I feel like I know who this is. I should we say I, your name? <laughs> is it okay? I don't know. Be like um. shout out to no. <laughs> um, no, that's fine. I, I, like for me, especially with the, like going back to the whole Annie Smith spirit, like especially with me being, I, if you've never seen me at Sheridan, then 
you're lying to yourself. I was always, I practically lived at the college, uh, other than security asking me to polite, like, politely to leave at 4 a.m. So, you know, like, what if I was actively avoiding you? Would I have seen you then? <laughs> yeah. If I'm trying to stay away from the print studio or. Well, you already i don't stop talking and i have a very like i have a very loud voice so especially when it comes to printmaking so you would have heard me seen me uh anyways but like yeah it's just i, I may have spoken to this person i yeah i have a feeling i have just i think she's very glorious i i honestly don't remember her exact name but um I'm just being conscious of time. So I want to make sure Frey, because she is the yeah. main artist today, that she gets her work. Yes. <laughs> so Frey, what do you think you're going to go forward after the pandemic? Or is yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for um, post pandemic art world because like n now I know, like I don't need to have this expensive studio um, space with a uh, really big canvases and, and like a, uh, expensive equipment like i could i could scrounge stuff up together from the dollarama and mm -hmm. put something together and like make art from my own home with like macgyver stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and like i i hope that when the pandemic is over i've also graduated from school so now I'll, ha I'll finally have time to like do whatever i want i'll never have to write an essay ever again i i was supposed to write an essay <laughs> i should have been writing an essay today i'm gonna what? tell you them <laughs> please oh my gosh i was supposed to be writing an essay today but i was making art instead and <laughs> i can't wait until i can just make art without without ever having to worry about writing essays. I, mm -hmm. I've, I've have, I have a whole list of things I want to do. Like I want to, I want to do more lino printing. I want to make more like of these uh, silk screen printings. I want to like, uh, I want to learn how to code a video game. I want to, I want to write a book or whatever. I can do anything now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, Sounds like we can look forward to a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I remember Lisa Neighbor had asked me, she's like, so Emma, what's the first thing you're going to be doing when you graduate? And I, I remember I was sitting in print with everybody and they were like, oh, what is she going to do? Because I'm always like, if you, I'm always doing something. And yeah. then, after then the person was like, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> that's what I've been doing. <laughs> that's why I look so well rested now. <laughs> Honestly, I could ask. For nothing more, I would, <laughs> would yeah. want nothing more than just, just, just a week long, week long nap. Like long snooze, wake up, you know. Yeah. yeah. Sleep would be sleep would be great. I haven't had sleep in. Emma, year. you graduated at the perfect time. <laughs> you the think year after that? you graduated, okay. everyone, all everyone does is sleep. Okay, I. Okay, then I'm, I got to look at it that way then, because I looked at it very negative at the beginning. I'm like, I don't have anything to do now. I have no studio. I have no friends. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> just in my room, just sleeping. Like, this is great, but I need my friends to know I'm sleeping. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I need them to know that I'm always sleeping. Are you going to update your Facebook status? I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, my WhatsApp is, I'm sleeping right now. Don't bother me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I have people messaging me, are you awake? And I just reply, no. <laughs> just like, <laughs> no man. Yeah. Well, other than that, we're over we're going over time now. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Thank you to everyone here on the screen on my screen. I can see. Um, if I can be less vague about that. Uh, be sure to stay tuned, everybody, uh, for our next workshop. So the, the best way of doing that is to be following us, uh, Frey at uh, words underscore on the underscore when, or it, I, I, I want to say everything's in the bio, in the description. Yeah, everything's in the bio. And uh, everyone that's on screen here is also down there. Yeah. And, uh, I we've also, got, I we've also I got a suggestion know. box as well. Yeah. Um, and also, I know... I know the only username I know for sure is the take at take action gallery on Instagram. And I know yours just because we've been in contact. 
Um, but yeah, if anybody ever has any questions, you're more than welcome to DM us or comment on one of our posts about our workshops. Um, but other than that, thank you everyone for coming out or staying indoors. Yeah. Um, and we'll take it from there. All right. Bye, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.